best of the rest of the news. In a little over a week, we'll hit the one-year anniversary of the earthquake and tsunami that triggered a nuclear crisis at Fukushima in Japan. And this week, we're learning that that nuclear crisis was even worse than it was originally thought. On Wednesday, Japanese scientists announced that twice as much radioactive cesium than estimated blew out of the plant after the earthquake and tsunami. That's about 40,000 trillion becquerels. And it took just 18 days for those radioactive particles to encircle the planet, turning up in places as far away as Vermont. French scientists are now calling on Japan to remain vigilant in its inspections of fruit, milk, and game to prevent further radio radioactive contamination. These new numbers come on the heels of a Greenpeace report on the Fukushima disaster, in which that organization places the blame for the crisis not on the natural disaster, but instead on the Japanese government. The report accuses the Japanese government of ignoring the risks posed to Fukushima before the earthquake and, quote, cutting corners to protect profits over people, end quote. It goes on to argue that nuclear energy is inherently unsafe and governments are too quick to approve nuclear power plants, while at the same time unable to deal with the consequences of nuclear disasters. That includes the United States. Currently, there are 23 General Electric Mark I reactors in operation around the United States. Mark I is the same reactor design used at Fukushima. And just last month, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission issued a warning to 96 nuclear reactors around the nation that sit on fault lines, urging operators to perform new stress tests to see if the reactor can hold up in an earthquake. So what should we make of all this? Kevin Camps joins me now. He's the radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear, beyondnuclear.org. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Great to have you with us. Uh, what do you make about this new information coming to light about Fukushima? Just how, and just how bad could it have gotten, or might it still get? Incredible revelations are coming out on a daily basis at this point. So, for example, the New York Times on Monday night reported that a private investigation, uh, 30 investigators brought together by a former editor of the Asahi Shimbun in Japan, which is a major newspaper. Incredible revelations. So uh, Adano, who was the chief cabinet secretary, the main spokesman at the time that the nuclear catastrophe began, was saying things like, no immediate health threat. The radiation's blowing out to sea. Don't worry about it. If you're within uh, 20 kilometers, yes, it may affect you. If you're not, it, it won't affect you. Incredibly, what the New York Times revealed is that Adano admitted to this investigatory group that the worst case scenario that he and the prime minister knew about was what he called a demonic chain reaction of meltdowns. So we had Fukushima Daiichi, three meltdowns. They knew about that. It was happening. But Fukushima Daini, four more reactors just seven miles to the south. They were worried the radioactivity releases from Daiichi would cause an evacuation of the workers from Daini. Those four reactors would melt down. Wow. And then further south, closer to Tokyo, there's another reactor. And so they were looking at the worst case scenario, all those reactors melting down, releasing catastrophic amounts of radioactivity. And long story short, evacuating Tokyo, a city of more than 30 million people, and abandoning it forever. The way that Adano put it was losing Tokyo. If wow. we lost Daiichi, Daini, and Tokai, we would lose Tokyo. That's incredible. Just what does 40,000 trillion becquerels mean? Well, 70% uh, went into the, into the ocean. Well, first of all, what, what does that number mean? What, you know, well, I, a becquerel is a single radioactive disintegration. Okay, so, so compare that to uh, you know, somebody getting an x-ray, somebody getting you know, too much radiation, what people were exposed to around Hiroshima or Nagasaki. I mean, what, how, how does the average person understand what this number means? It's, it's a catastrophic radioactivity release. Uh, the powers that be in the nuclear establishment would like people to think that it simply dilutes into the Earth's atmosphere, into the Earth's oceans. We know that any exposure to radioactivity carries a health risk, and so that means that you know, that dilution gets reversed in nature. It, it moves its way up the food it chain. It gets concentrated. Bioconcentration, biomagnification. And so the food pathway is, is where people are going to be the most exposed to internal radiation doses, which conveniently the nuclear industry often neglects to the point of just ignoring completely. That is a very serious pathway of uh, health damage. And that's the stuff that can cause cancer. It's inside your body. It's just A whole firing. spectrum of diseases. They, they also like to focus just on cancer. Um, that happens all the time. But if you look at Chernobyl, for example, 
uh, a whole spectrum of diseases, including genetic damage, certainly a, a vast uh, number of different kinds of cancers, but things like uh, Chernobyl heart, which is radioactive cesium attacking the heart muscle in children, uh, thyroid pathology, and the list just keeps going. Now, one of the things that they said is that twice as much radioactive cesium was released as they had previously disclosed. And previously, they had said, oh, well, there's twice as much as we had said before. Yeah. This is the second doubling. Um, why, should, why should anybody care about radioactive cesium? What, how does that enter the food chain? What does it do in the food chain? How does it affect humans? It's actually the third doubling, and each time you've had me on the show, and it was weeks into this catastrophe, they doubled it. Months mm. in, they doubled it. And now here we are, a year later, they're, they're doubling it again. So it's just incredible. I mentioned Chernobyl heart. <clears throat> it is uh, radioactive cesium, which seeks human muscle tissue. That's where it ends up. So th the body thinks the cesium is potassium, is that right? Yes, your body mistakes this. Uh, it, it ends up in places like the heart, and the children in the Chernobyl region have heart pathologies that you would expect to see in very old people, but these mm. are children. Groups like the Irish Chernobyl Children's Project have organized teams of doctors from Western Europe, the United States, to go into Belarus where they lack uh, this kind of specialization in medicine and do just like a MASH unit, uh, hundreds and hundreds of heart surgeries on children to put patches on their hearts because they have holes in their hearts and it's uh, the radioactive cesium. And actually the doctor, Dr. Bandashevsky in Belarus, who figured out what was going on, was imprisoned by the dictatorship of Belarus to try to shut him up because the Belarusian dictatorship has a pro-nuclear power agenda um, and they wanted this guy to go away. In, in, we, we just have a minute left. In three weeks, Vermont Yankees' 40-year license to operate expires. What's going on up in Vermont? All kinds of stuff uh, is going on. We have a March Against Nuclear Madness page on our website and on Facebook listing all of the Fukushima commemorations on March 11th and the rest of the month. In Vermont, uh, what we're probably looking at on March 22nd, which is year 40 plus one day, is large-scale civil disobedience in a nonviolent tradition. There have been civil disobedience actions led by grandmothers. One woman, uh, Frances Crow, is in her 90s. Yeah, She's been arrested grannies. several times at Vermont Yankee the past five years. I think there's going to be a lot more people on March 22nd at the yeah. front gates. I lived in Vermont for a decade. I can tell you the people in that state are really upset about that nuclear power plant. Um, Kevin, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. And, and for the great work you're doing at beyondnuclear.org. The clock to nuclear disaster here in the United States is ticking. Let's ditch nuclear power, the most expensive and most dangerous form of energy on the planet, before we regret what might happen.